learning and fun. Here we are again, ready to take on English subject one episode at a time. Silainon TV is happy to bring you the juiciest lessons in English time. Join the fun as we serve English lessons for everyone. I am Teacher Camille Therese A. Bacanto in the service of Silainon Learners. Hello Grade 5 Learners! Welcome again to our new episode today. Come on, let's learn new things together. Today's lesson is about summarizing various text types based on elements. Our lesson's objectives are Summarize various text types based on elements. Identify the elements of literary text. Summarize narrative text based on elements such as theme, setting, characters, and plot. And recognizes the steps on summarizing. But first, we have to define what is meant by summary. So when we say summary, it is a short retelling of a story or text that includes only the most important information. A summary also includes the main idea of the text and omits the minor details. And a summary is considerably shorter than the original text. Now, let's freshen up our minds with the elements of the narrative based from the previous lesson by answering this activity. Direction. Tell what is being described in each sentence. Choose your answer inside the box and write it on a piece of paper. Again, you are going to tell what is being described in the sentence. Choose your answer inside the box and write it on a piece of paper. Your choices for your answers are the following. Plot, setting, theme, characters, and conflict. Are you ready, learners? Number one. It is the time and place where the story happens. I will repeat. It is the time and place where the story happens. Number two. It is the message the writer is trying to convey through the story. Again, number two. It is the message the writer is trying to convey through the story. Number three. They are the people or animals that play a part in the story. I will repeat number three. They are the people or animals that play a part in the story. Now let's proceed to number four. It tells the sequence of events from the beginning, the middle, and the ending. It is made up of the problem, the important events, and the resolution. Again, for number four, it tells the sequence of events from the beginning, the middle, and ending. It is made up of the problem, the important events, and the resolution. Now, let's proceed to number five. It refers to the problem to be solved in the story, the struggle in which the character is involved. Again, I will repeat number five. It refers to the problem to be solved in the story, the struggle in which the character is involved. Now, let us check your answer. For number one, the correct answer is setting. Setting refers to the time and place where the story happened. Very good. Number two. The correct answer is theme. You 
got it right. When we say theme, it is the message the writer is trying to convey throughout the story that often depicts the life's lesson. Number three. The correct answer is characters. Very good. So when we say characters, it refers to the people, the animals, or creatures that take part in the action of the story. Number four. The correct answer is plot. So when we say plot, it tells the sequence of events from the beginning, the middle, and the ending. It is made up of the problem, the important events, and the resolution. Good job, kids! Let's proceed to number five. The correct answer is conflict. So when we say conflict, it refers to the problem to be solved in the story. The struggle in which the character is involved. Very good! Good job, kids! I believe you answered the questions correctly. Now, let's proceed. There are many types of text depending on their purpose, structure, and language feature. Text types are any forms of writing having different purposes, forms, and features. Generally, there are two types of text. We have the factual and the literary. So let us going to differentiate the two. So when we say factual or non-fiction, its purpose is to inform the reader and to convey the information on a specific subject. It gives useful information focusing on truth and reality. While the literary or the fictional text types its purpose is to entertain, elicit an emotional response, or engage the readers by using creative language or imagery. Now, let us find out if you really understand our lesson for today. Identify the following text types, whether it is factual or literary. Again, you have to identify the following text types, whether it is factual or literary. Number one, its main purpose is to entertain the reader. The answer is literary or fictional text type. Very good, learners. Now, let's proceed to number two. It teaches the readers about facts and valid information. What is your answer? Good job! Factual or non-fictional text type. Now let's proceed to number three. It is usually a made-up story with characters who may be like real people or imaginary. What is your answer? Good job, kids! The correct answer is literary or fictional text type. Now, let's proceed to number four. It has facts that can be checked and proven. Again, it has facts that can be checked and proven. What is your answer? You got it right! Factual or non-fictional text type. Now, let's proceed to number five. Its stories are about real people and happenings like what's on the news. Again, its stories are about real people and happenings like what's on the news. So, what is your answer? Good job! The answer is factual or non-fictional text type. Now that everything is clear on the difference between the factual and the literary text, let us focus on the literary narrative text, 
the poems and their elements. So when we say narrative text, it is a type of literary text that entertains, informs, or instructs the readers by telling a story. It can either be fictional or imaginary or non-fictional or real life. For the fictional narratives, we have picture books, the mystery, the fairy tales, science fiction, horror, fables, plays, cartoons, fantasy, novels, adventure. We have also the myths and we have the legends. For the non-fictional narratives, we have biography. We have also the autobiography, the articles, the newspaper reports, the historical writings, and we have the diary. There you go, kids! Amazing work! Now, for a deeper understanding of today's lesson, let us focus on the more crucial part on summarizing. To summarize, we need to follow certain steps. When summarizing, we must read and comprehend the text. Identify the main idea and key points. Take down notes on how the events in the plot was put in order from the beginning, the middle, and the ending. Then, summarize the information in your own words. Now, let's take note. Summaries can be presented in different styles like a graphic organizer. So, you may plan your summary using like this chart. On the upper part, you may write in there your title or the title of the story. Next, we have paragraph 1. In the paragraph 1, you have to include the introduction or exposition. You have to include the characters and the setting. For paragraph 2, have to include the conflict and the rising action which includes the climax, the falling action, and the resolution. And for paragraph 3, conclusion or the theme, and then the resolution of the conflict. By doing this, it allows you to prove that you exactly understood the information in the text or in the story. Now, let's have a quick check. Direction. Identify the element of the literary text from the story. Choose your answer from the choices below. Your choices are, we have the mood, the resolution, setting, theme, and character. read to you first a story entitled One Moment at Recess by Grace S. Ponce. Listen very carefully, kids. It was 10 o'clock in the morning at Don Albino and Doña Dolores Heaton Integrated School. It's time to take a snack. It was recess time. Pupils are lining up, waiting for their turn to get inside the canteen. Out of the crowd, Joselito seems down at the bench, just looking around. The kids are eating and some are playing. He had no money to buy something because his father was not able to receive his salary yet. His mother told him to have a heavy breakfast for him to be full until lunchtime. While waiting for the time to pass by, he suddenly saw 50 pesos on the ground. He said to himself, If I spent this money, I would have lots to eat for recess. But 
he knows that it is not the right thing to do. So, he goes to his classroom and asks for help from his advisor to find the owner of that money. It so happened that one of his classmates, Irene, was crying at the corner of their classroom because she lost her money. Joselito asked Irene how much she lost. It's 50 pesos, said Irene. Joselito then gave the money to Irene and said, I think it's yours. Irene was so thankful to Joselito. As a form of her appreciation, she told Joselito to go to the canteen with her and they shared snacks for recess. Joselito was so grateful that because of his honesty, he was able to enjoy his recess time. Again, what you are going to do now is to identify the element of the literary text from the story we had just read entitled, One Moment at Recess. You may choose your answer inside the box. Your choices are mood, resolution, setting, theme, and characters. Are you ready now, kids? Let's get it on! Number one, it was 10 o'clock in the morning at Don Albino and Doña Dolores Eason Integrated School. Again, for number one, it was 10 in the morning at Don Albino and Doña Dolores Eason Integrated School. What is your answer, kids? Yes, very good. The correct answer is setting. Now, let's proceed to number two. Joselito, a grade 5 pupil, Irene, and his classmate. Again, for number two, Joselito, a grade 5 pupil, Irene, and his classmate. What is your answer, kids? Good job! The correct answer is character. Number three. While waiting for the time to pass by, he suddenly saw 50 pesos on the ground. Again, number three. While waiting for the time to pass by, he suddenly saw 50 pesos on the ground. What is your answer, kids? Good job! The correct answer is mood. Now let's proceed to number four. He gives the 50 pesos that he saw to Irene and said, I think it's yours. Again, for number four, he gives the 50 pesos that he saw to Irene and said, I think it's yours. And the correct answer is, Resolution. Good job! Now let's proceed to number five. Honesty. Do not claim what is not yours. Again, for our last number, honesty. Do not claim what is not yours. And the correct answer is theme. Very good, kids. You got it right. But wait, there's more. Now, let us try to summarize the story we had just read and listened to, which entitled, One Moment at Recess. We will incorporate the different elements of the story using the graphic organizer presented earlier. So we have the graphic organizer, we use the hamburger. A while ago, it was presented on the upper part, you should have the title. And followed by the paragraph 1, which includes your introduction and exposition. Or you can also include the characters and the setting. For paragraph 2, you have the conflict and the rising action. You have to include the climax, the falling action, and the resolution. 
for the last paragraph, you have to include in there the theme or how the conflict was being resolved by the character. We use the hamburger as one example of our graphic organizer. As you can see, the hamburger contains fillings which represent the elements needed in our summary for us to understand the whole story represented by the hamburger itself. Now, let us try to make our own summary of the story one moment at recess. So, for the title, you have one moment at recess. For the first paragraph, you may include, It was 10 o'clock in the morning at Don Albino and Doña Dolores Hison Integrated School. Jose Lito and his classmates are lining up to get inside the canteen. For our paragraph 2, we can include in there, While waiting for the time to pass by, Jose Lito suddenly saw 50 pesos on the ground. He told himself to spend the money, so he would have lots of food for recess. But he knows that it is not the right thing to do. For the third and the last paragraph, Joselito found his classmates Irene crying at the corner of their classroom because she lost her 50 pesos. He believed that the money found was Irene's money, so he gave back the money to Irene. Joselito was grateful that because of his honesty, he was able to enjoy his recess time. Okay, kids, aside from hamburger, you may also use a book or any other graphic organizer similar to what I have presented. Good job, kids! Amazing work! Now, for your additional activity, using your own graphic organizer, make a summary of any narrative text whether it is fictional or non-fictional narratives, incorporating the different elements of the story. You may also present your summary creatively. Another episode has ended, but don't despair. We shall see each other again next time on English is Fun, here on Silainon TV, where we all have fun and learning is for everyone. I hope you have learned something today. Always remember that learning never ends. Get as much dose as you need anyway, every day. Again, this is Teacher Camille Therese A. Bacanto. Happy to bring you Sinainon TV in the comforts of your home. See you around on our next episode. Keep safe, everyone.